Thank you all for coming out uh, this evening. It's been absolutely fabulous getting a chance to get you all together mm -hmm. and see you at the same time and, you know, get all these connections together. Oh, it's been yeah. absolutely fantastic. But I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the reason that we're all here, the reason that we're doing this to begin with, is because of my mother, Carol McGee. And I can only speak for myself when I can say I have fond, fond memories of her. Um, when we lived in uh, Laurel 10 to 25th Street, you know, we, we had lots of fat, you know, it, it was a community there, you know? And that, that's missing today, and it takes a village, you know? And uh, we had lots of kids coming in and out of the house, and we were going in their houses and so on. And even today, we have a Facebook page with over 83 of us kids from the block that communicate, share pictures, talk to each other, and stuff like that. That's unheard of today, okay? And my mom was responsible for a lot of us going in and out of the house and keeping us all together and so on. So I want to say thank you, Mom, for all you've done and all you do. There's a lot of things that, you know, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, we wait till the last minute or it's too late to tell people that we love them and we care about them and that they mean everything to us. And uh, I've traveled all over the country, in Canada, and lived in, you know, all borders in the country. And uh, I've had opportunity to give many speeches, okay? But there's none more important to me and more dear to my heart than this one. I have no speech. I'm just speaking from my heart. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. But in all those speeches that I gave, you know, people ask me, man, how do you, you know, they come across me and say, well, how do you speak like that? You know, you speak so well, and this and that, and all this other kind of thing. And all I can say is, I had people in my life that were the wind under my wings. All right. That taught me how to carry myself. It taught me how to be gracious and respectful, and caring and loving, and genuine with people when I met. And this woman here is responsible for most of the attitude. City, man, I thought it was really funny and silly, you know, because um, where she's been and the corporate America and so on, she used to just look me in my face and she'd say, son, I just want you to be a person. And I would say, that's kind of, to myself, now I got to admit, Ma would say, that's kind of silly. Why don't you just say, I want you to be responsible, I want you to be respectful. So in one word, she just said, be a person, or one phrase, right? But I knew exactly what she meant. Okay? Yeah, and mom, hopefully, you know, you're satisfied and you think I've become the person you think I should be. Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I wrote a little something uh, on her birthday a little while ago. And a lot of you may or may not know, but last year we tried to get together in San Diego because she's lived in San Diego for the last 12 years. Born and raised here in New York City, the Lower East Side of Manhattan, grew up, and um, we all couldn't make it out there. So we did everything we could in our power to make this happen again, all right? Because again, while we're all here, we should show each other love and let each other know how we feel about one another. But I want to say that my mom is one of my sheroes, okay? Because my mom, and some of you may know this, some of you may not know, but she was the first, one of the first African-American female executives in the 70s that I knew of. I mean, she was the former vice president of finance for New Hermes Corporation, okay? And James Talcott Corporation. James Talcott, yeah. James Talcott Corporation, which is right across the street from Radio City Music Hall. And I remember going to visit my mom there, going into this building, going, wow, you know, from a little kid. Yeah. But you imagine this African-American woman in the early, early 70s being you know, a vice president over the finance department for a global organization, mm -hmm. all right? That was unheard of back then, as far as I know, okay? And so she was a, a great example in terms of being what you, you know, what you thought you, or setting your goals and dreams and accomplishing those things. And I gotta say that, you know, she didn't start off that way. She started off working in hospitals, okay? And my sister and I, you know, we were born at the time, she had kids already. She got a degree, two of them, while she was, while she had us and working. And went from working in the hospitals, we thought she was going to be an RN, decided to change her mind, and went into business and finance. Then after that, 
she started her own credit manage management company called CMO Organization. We were living there in Laws and Queens. Um, in the 80s, she started her own music company and record label. And worked with members of Cool in the Game, you know. She was in our kitchen right there in Laws and Queens, okay, auditioning to sing some of our mother's songs. And some of the songs she wrote were actually on the radio. Um, who remembers Andre Crouch? She wrote gospel songs. She, she sang them, laid the tracks, sang them herself. And she was on WTHE radio along with Andre Crouch. And her songs were climbing the charts back in the, the early 80s, OK? The se late 70s, late early 80s, though. Yeah? It was right at 79, 81, 80. OK. Anyway, <laughs> she wrote and produced all of that stuff. And you know how, what's his name, Master Pete sold his records out of the trunk with his car and became very famous? Well, she, she started doing that too, OK? And has done so many things. So we also did a television show she produced and hosts called Fantastic Kids Doing Fantastic Things. And so I just want you guys to know, huh? and you know what, I saw my first Rolls Royce. I'm not bragging, but I thought as a kid, we were out playing football in the street. We did that a lot back then, okay? And I saw my first Rolls Royce pull up down the block in Laurelton, and the guy stopped in front of my house and had a bunch of designer clothes and went into my house, and I was like, what's going on? And I went in there, and he had all the clothes laid out over the place, and my mom was shopping right there in her living room. I said, man, so, 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 so for those of you who wonder why I dress the way I do, <laughs> where my fashion sense comes from, father my father and my mother, yeah. you know, they're responsible, okay, yeah. so don't blame me. Yeah. But anyway, um, I tell you, she's been an absolute phenomenal example, a great mother to not only myself and the community, um, and I love her dearly. Would you please? You know, show your love for this calendar.